Okay, all right. Thank you, everyone. My name is Simon, and uh, uh, I, uh, Yelena Milkovic is my advisor, so I work this problem as my part of PhD project. And it's a great privilege to be here today. So uh, as we saw, uh, user authentication is a big problem, and uh, almost all online services require identify yourself, and they need to track who you are so that they can sell their product and provide more personalized content and provide more accurate information to you. So we all know that um, this is a problem. And um, for now, 2012, he surveyed that um, he compared every possible authentication mechanism exists in 2012 and compared that there is a no, no good replacement for texture password. So um, I'd like to actually work, uh, talk about uh, passphrase, uh, not password. Passphrase has also the same problem. So I just want to uh, show you one uh, quick diagram on passphrase and why it can be a problem. So um, like password, passphrase um, is, uh, have a memor memorability and security problem. So people tend to create the more uh, predictable phrase and sentences. And um, however, the longer passphrase uh, is hard to remember. And random passphrase is very, very hard to remember. So our goal is to use a uh, monomic, monomic letter, uh, which is uh, a few characters we take from the, uh, your passphrase, and make it more memorable and secure. So this is a, a, just one um, different way to generate passphrase. So prior research on um, passphrase, there are a number of research in this area. But the main, uh, I just picked the three prior main uh, research. And one is about cracking. So uh, also Bonao 2012, he looked at uh, cracking two, three word uh, passphrases and uh, showed that uh, they can do the dictionary attack. But it is only limited, limited in two, three word. And uh, system generated passphrase, actually, uh, system can generate five or six word memorable passphrase. And uh, Shay in 2012, they showed that and did a user study. However, they got the feedback that the system pass generated passphrases are really, really hard to record, and people just hate those. Um, so, um, Last year, um, actually, natural language processing people actually came up with uh, generating poem uh, to be 60-bit entropy. And uh, this is a really clever idea. However, uh, users have to form a new memory. So it is still a little difficult, to me uh, difficult for users. Um, so I propose two different approach. Um, the first approach is, let's say uh, you generate the passphrase, um, mom loves apple and orange. And uh, we take a first letter of this, your passphrase. Uh, so M-L-A-A-O is your uh, hint, uh, mnemonic we generate. So when user authenticate, um, we present M-L-A-A-O and uh, by looking at this letter, first letter, user can remember their, hopefully remember their passphrase. Another use of monomic can be, um, we can enforce a certain letter to be, uh, start with uh, your passphrase to be start with. For example, uh, we randomly generate mnemonic letter A, B, A, L, O for user. And um, user have to create the passphrase that start with that each letter, for example, Apple, bread and locks and order. So what is the problem here if we do this? Easy to crack, right? So hint is also helpful to me, but it also narrow down the search space. So um, we consider two types of attack model based on statistical guessing. Um, so the first attack is language model attacker. Um, so in NLP, natural language processing people, they, build, they can build a, uh, actually language model, which is, uh, for example, I love you. And uh, the probability of I love you can be broken down into uh, probability I and times probability 
love given I and probably you given love. So this is a biogram model. Uh, so natural language processing people do, do this all the time. It's pretty easy to do. So uh, the reason I'm bringing it is uh, attacker also can compute the precisely the probability of occurring each word and phrases. They can compute that. So once you compute the probability, they can try. Uh, they can try that uh, more probable uh, phrase first, and then uh, next one, etc. Another attack, possible attack, would be uh, the prior research showed that people come up with a past phrase from the famous quote and poems and lyrics and movie. So, um, for example, oh God, please save me, or where there is a will, there is a way, or roads are red, violets are blue. So actually those are the past phrase we actually got from user study. We ask users to create your own past phrase and people create two of this. So uh, once the attacker crawl a lot of uh, uh, famous quotes and poems, there's a potential that they can just try that and then uh, use, that, use that as a baseline to attack. So they can substitute word and just like a John the Ripper, you can create the rules and you can attack it. So uh, these are actually two types of attack we are considering. So my apology if you know already how to measure the strength of password. Um, but there are several different ways. So brute force attack, uh, let's say you, have, you know um, every possible answer space, for example, your security question, or if you know entire answer space, then you can try every single one until you get it right. That's a brute force attack. And statistical guessing attack would be um, if you are a little bit smarter and you know what is more probable name, for example, um, Bobby is more probable than uh, my name, first name Simon, for example, he can try the more probable answer. So in the John the Ripper case, you have a popular word list, right? So you can rock you, you, have a, you can make a frequency and try more probable answer. So statistical guessing is more like you have a, a set of a popular uh, list. And um, next one is more uh, theoretical uh, calculation, Shannon entropy. Um, so basically, if you know the probability of uh, each uh, item, uh, you have complete probability distribution, you can compute the entropy precisely. However, Messi in 1994, um, in information theory uh, pay, uh, conference, he showed that actually Shannon entropy overestimate the actual number of guests needed for password and security question. So uh, later on, um, other people also shown that uh, to improve a more accurate um, password strength measure. Um, so I'm just picking the most list work uh, on guest number. Last year, um, uh, Del Amico Matteo, he proposed and developed a, 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 a password guessing um, uh, work using Monte Carlo simulation. And uh, he showed that his approach is more accurately uh, approximate the actual number of guests needed. So we take uh, his approach uh, in, uh, and measure our uh, different uh, passphrase we propose here. So um, as you can see, we, I just want to remind again, we are generating certain number of letters for users. And the problem is if I just set five letter lengths and if we just randomly generate that, the problem is um, people uh, use the easy word. At the same time, if I generate the X, for example, in English, uh, usually people always choose the X-ray, for example. So unequal distribution in your dictionary or your native language can uh, potentially generate the weak passphrase. So we have to model how to measure the, uh, how, how we can generate the more um, stronger passphrase. So how we can do is, um, first we set the, some certain target strengths and then we generate the one word and 
we count the number of uh, uh, actual letter and count the number of word in that starting with that letter. And then we generate another random characters and count the number of uh, word that's starting with a letter. So this is completely based on uh, yeah, uh, English and uh, based on your uh, native uh, language and word corpus, th things can be different. So uh, we need to have a dictionary to do this and uh, we use uh, Google 20,000K, uh, 20K corpus from the web and uh, that was the most popular uh, word that I used in the web. So that's not the exhaustive list of words in uh, uh, English. However, they are the most popular word choices people use. Um, so we use that as a baseline to generate the word, uh, estimate the word strengths in uh, each um, letter. So uh, we consider three different types of uh, passphrase model. So first one is you pass, which is user choose um, five or six uh, word passphrase. And system pass is where system randomly generate the five or six word passphrase for you. And the MN pass is the one that we actually proposing. Um, actually, before that, U pass and sys pass has two variations. Uh, one is actually showing the first letter hint to you when you authenticate. And uh, MN pass, uh, we generate the letter for user, and user create a passphrase. And then when user authenticate, we uh, display the hint. MN pass zero is about five, six word uh, passphrase. And MN pass long, we uh, increase the uh, strength to be about 70 bits, and uh, it turns out about seven, eight word passphrase. And MN pass one is um, same as MN pass zero. However, system generate one random for word for you, and uh, the rest to user choose. So, um, so we ran the IRB approved user study and um, we use Amazon Mechanical <coughs> Turk for uh, evaluating um, memorability and security. And we had a, a record for after three days and seven days. So uh, people create a password and they come back after three days and seven days. So we include the result uh, participant who complete both tasks. So it turns out about 390 people total and uh, if we detect any copy and paste event, we disqualify and reject those people. And yeah, so only one uh, participant can uh, do one types of passphrase creation. So that we just didn't allow uh, one person to do multiple passphrase generation. So um, these are the results for um, you pass and sys pass after three and seven day record. So we can see that uh, sys pass has very poor record rate, uh, 20% and 12%, uh, while when user create uh, about 50%. And uh, we also did a relaxed match, which means uh, sometimes user remember the word, but they make a mistake on tense or single approval. So we allow, when we allow those mistakes, the record rate goes up. So we can uh, programmatically do this by applying a port stemming in natural language processing. They, we can apply, uh, we actually use a portal stemmer to do it. So when we actually present the hint to user, um, the success rate went to 6% to, for the syspass approach and the UPass approach about 20%. So there is a much more uh, higher record rate when users were able to create their own passphrase. So we believe that um, user knows the gist of the word and when we present to the user, it really helped them. In MMPass approach, we show all the hints um, and the record is about 60%, 60 to little lower than 70%. So, um, uh, it, the record rate is comparable to the user chosen passphrases. So, so when we actually did the attack analysis, um, with the, we used one billion um, uh, corpus to create those uh, language model and compute the precise probability of user chosen, user created and system created passphrase. And 
we compute the probability and we use the, uh, uh, we, compute, uh, we calculate the guess number according to Monte Carlo simulations. And it turns out that when we um, present a hint to user, um, the strength goes lose about 10 to the five. So the reason is uh, when you present a letter, uh, not only me, but attacker can also guess and that significantly reduce the number of words and we lose about 10 to the five across all the approach. How, um, however, when we ask users to create two or uh, two more words or system generate the word, random word for you, then the, uh, you can recoup the strengths uh, by doing that. Also, when we do the relaxed matching, which means when we allow users to do little mistake, uh, stemming or, uh, or making mistake on verb and tense, then uh, we lose about uh, 10 times. So actually, lex matching wasn't a big problem here. OK, so now we uh, present a result on phrase dictionary attacker. So we crawl about 280K famous phrase from the web. And uh, we measure how many words in user created or we created past phrase overlap with the uh, um, the, the famous phrase we uh, crawled from the web. And as you can see, um, the longer the overlap is, is bad because uh, you, you, uh, attacker can come up with a baseline fast, past, uh, famous phrase and then he can substitute and add. So um, you can see that user tend to come up with a more um, uh, word that are similar to the uh, famous uh, phrases. And while MMPass or SysPass approach, system randomly generates, so the maximum you can get is about one word match from the famous phrase. However, uh, MMPass, our approach is between about, uh, most of them are on two word matches. So um, it is good uh, to have less number of word overlap. So these are the example when we ask users to create uh, their own passphrase and um, yeah, my cat is very funny. Yeah, it's one of them. So roses are red and violets are blue. Ines, sorry, my pronunciation is not good. Ines, shuti, sich, yeah, I don't know. So some people create that German phrase. Uh, so um, we ask user to also rate uh, the hint was helpful or our approach was easy to use. This is totally subjective measure, however, uh, we want to see that um, how, how much people doesn't like about system passphrase or where, whether our approach can be uh, uh, not bad. At least we can prove that. And uh, yeah, so we gave uh, about one to 10 scale, uh, re uh, record scale. And these are yeah, some of the sentiment we calculate from the user. So uh, conclusion is, um, yeah, we tried to come, as, uh, come up with the approach that um, uh, we get the benefit from system generated as well as user created passphrase, where users tend to create memorable passphrase or password. However, they are not strong. So system can help in a way I, to increase the pass, uh, strength of passphrase. So these are the um, actually the main goal we want to explore and uh, it obviously hint improve and uh, we want to do find a balance where uh, hint doesn't sacrifice the uh, strength as much as uh, uh, as much as uh, 10 to the, I guess uh, 10 to the 5 here. So uh, we didn't study uh, password, password reuse. However, yeah, this is some of the future work we are heading to. Um, uh, actually before, go, do I have some time or? <laughs> Yeah, so the, the reason I, we propose this way, uh, I didn't mention enough, because um, uh, why we enforce this uh, guide, ABALO, uh, is um, this somewhat break how people normally come up with their passphrase. So there's a two reason is um, we want people to create their own word. However, they, we want to come up with uncommon pattern by randomly enforcing this letter combination. Uh, by, by doing that, uh, it can improve the security. 
And also, users provide their uh, own words starting with a letter. Uh, it is better than just randomly uh, assign the uh, word for you. So these are the yeah, main motivation and, uh, uh, of our approach. And actually, this concludes uh, my talk. Yeah. Any questions? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.